Some of the people that had been around the club for a while said that it would kill the club. People wouldn't come here if we didn't offer them meat. Forest Green Rovers are flying high towards the top of League Two, but they are perhaps better known for being the world's first vegan football club. And even the club's pitch is completely free from pesticides and is 100% organic. I've come to their home ground in Stroud in Gloucestershire to meet the chairman, Dale Vince, the head chef, and one of the players, experienced centre-half, Matt Mills. Let's go. Did you get that in can? Did he say trials, did he say? <laughs> did he say trials? Welcome to Plant Power. Hello. Hi. Hi, I'm Alex. Hi, I'm nice Jade. To nice to meet you. Thanks for having me here, Jade. No so, problem. In the kitchen of a Foppa Lee club. Yeah. But a vegan Foppa Lee club. Yeah. So, what is your role up there? So, I'm the head chef here. So, um, I'll prepare the menus and prepare the food on match days. You're responsible for what the players are eating yeah. and what the fans are eating yeah. on match day as yeah. well. So that's quite a rare combination, I guess. Yeah, yeah, it's quite a big job. It's nice that it's vegan as well because it teaches the fans um, people that wouldn't usually eat vegan food. I find that it's more creative when using vegan food. Like for protein, you've got your um, beans, le legumes, um, you've got your quinoa, stuff like that. Um, like little things like sunflower mints, like every 100 grams, it's got 50 grams of protein in it, which is amazing for the players. So Matt, thanks for joining me. Forest Green Rovers, the world's first vegan football club. Have you encountered many obstacles, for instance, in playing for a completely vegan football club, whether it's like eating specific things? No, not really. I think as a, as a football player, you've, you know, you're extremely fortunate you know, in the terms of, you know, you finish a game and uh, protein shakes are handed to you and uh, food is supplied, um, provided for by the club. So there's no complaints on my end. I've been looked after really well since I've been here. It just so happens that the food that we're eating is vegan. Pre-season when we went, we went away, um, we stayed in the hotel for the week. I thought, you know, there could be a, a lack of options and am I going to struggle with the food? Um, but, it, you know, sailed through it, it was fine. Quite a few of the boys are vegan actually, um, or vegetarian. Um, away, you away from the ground. No, I'm not. Um, but I think what it has done, um, not only to myself, but the people around me is, is probably made me aware that I was probably eating too much meat. Um, probably through a lack of education, if I'm being honest, in terms of what else there is available. So yeah, it's been interesting. Um, as they say, every day's a learning day. Um, I think that's been the case since I've been here and uh, it's definitely obviously affecting my diet because I'm not, I'm not getting nowhere near as much meat as I probably was like last year or the year before. What are you cooking at the moment? So I'm cooking mac and cheese at the moment. But um, vegan mac and so cheese? So vegan mac and cheese, yeah. So it's got um, flora, um, the dairy free, um, just plain flour. And then for the bechamel, I'll use oatly. So to pour that in and then it'll go nice and thick. Get in there. Just a little bit lumpy from the cheese. Is everything vegan on the menu here at Forest Green? Everything's completely vegan, yeah. We don't use any animal products at all um, at Forest Green. It's been that way for four years now. I've been here for, um, this is my second season, for two years. Um, so obviously for me, being vegan is like a dream job um, because I'm a chef and it's really rare to find a complete vegan, vegan chef role. So, um, yeah, it's really good for me and I think that a lot of the players are brought into it, like some of them become plant-based because of it. Um, they've noticed their energy levels rising. If someone doesn't, um, isn't sure about it and they're like, mm, I don't know because it's vegan, because they don't like the word vegan or something, they've got their back up about the word vegan, just let them try it and they're like, oh, okay, fair enough. <laughs> it's actually quite nice, yeah, so. I think that's been my response to a lot of the vegan food that I've tried because I'm not myself a vegan or I'm not yet anyway but I've seen the merits of including more plant-based meals in my diet yeah I'm looking forward to trying this mac and cheese today yeah, yeah I hope you like it and it shows that there's room for including plant-based meals into your plan whether you're a player or a of fan course, because yeah. like you said you may not have to be completely vegan but it's a sustainable choice yeah or at least it seems to be yeah and if you can include the occasional meal into your plan, yeah. it'll help the environment as well. So uh, Exactly, even going plant-based for two days a week is gonna make such a massive impact on the environment. 
and on the animals, you know, so why not give it a try? And it's just as tasty, I promise. It certainly smells good anyway. Oh, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> And I'm an absolute sucker for mac and cheese oh, yeah. as well. Oh yeah, so, of course. You can um, tell me whether you think it's um, as good as normal mac and cheese. Definitely lot yeah. le a lot less fat in him. Yeah, I'll take that. Yeah. Guilt-free mac and cheese. Yeah. Years ago was a pipe dream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> let's hope it's a reality now. It's got to have loads of sauce because it um, it dries out if it's like left for a while. So in other words, eat the meal very quickly then. Yeah. I don't need to be told that. No. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, I'll put a little bit of uh, a little bit of garnish on there for you. Ta da! Hope you're hungry. How good does that look? But before tucking into the vegan mac and cheese, I wanted to find out why Forest Green had become the UK's first plant based professional football club. To do this, I met with Chairman Dale Vince. Hi, Dale. Alex, how, how are you doing? doing? Yeah, you okay? I'm good. I'm good. Thanks for having me at Forest Green. Pleasure. Forest Green Rovers, the world's first vegan football club. What motivated you to take this club in that direction? Veganism is at the heart of our philosophy as a company. Uh, we being Ecotricity and we rescued Forest Green nearly 10 years ago in the summer of 2010. And when we found ourselves responsible for the club, we immediately realized that we had to bring our principles and ethos to the club. And one of the first things we bumped into was food. The meat was on the menu here. Uh, and we had to change that because, well, I mean, I can give you lots of good reasons, but I mean, there are three, three main themes, climate, human health, and animal welfare, animal rights, in fact. Uh, but also saw an opportunity to talk to a new audience of people relatively untouched by this kind of thing, the, you know, the world of football fans, and maybe through that, the wider world of sports. So we had the idea that we could create a green football club and use that as a tool in the fight against climate change. Your decision to make Forest Green, as you say, a green football club has gone hand in hand with their rise as a football team. How has that green philosophy benefited what's happened on the pitch as well? I see the two things as being symbiotic. I sometimes think of us uh, being like a person with two legs. Uh, one of our legs is the environment and the other leg is football. <clears throat> and when both legs are working properly, they help each other. We move as a body um, because of that. What are some practical ways that you've implemented changes to energy, transport and food at Forest Green. On the roof of the stand behind you there, the south stand, we've got solar panels. We make 20% of our own electricity right here. The rest we bring in from windmills up and down the country. The closest is on the hill I used to live on, uh, just over the tree line there. In transport, we've got charging points for electric cars out the front. And in food, of course, we've, we've gone vegan for the players, uh, the fans uh, and the staff. So the pitch itself is organic, which is another big issue, um, in, an environment issue. You know, we have to stop using pesticides and fertilizers in farming uh, and in life generally. Uh, we capture the water from under the pitch and reuse it. Water is a big issue of climate change. You know, generally I think it's all about uh, using less and wasting less, whether it's in energy transport or food, and what you do use, get it from a sustainable source. What was the fans' initial response following your decision to change the club's menu into a completely vegan one? And at the time I remember some of the people that had been around the club for a while said that it would kill the club, you know, that people wouldn't come here if we didn't offer them meat, which, you know, uh, was, an, for me, an odd thing to say or think. But, you know, I think food sales have probably increased sixfold since then. The food is fantastic. Um, you know, we've won awards for, for some of our food, like the pie, uh, for example. And, and it just shows, uh, it shows two things, really. It shows that you can have great food at football, which is, I think is unexpected by a lot of people, but it shows also that food without animals in is also great food. But it was just new to them, you know, they were a little bit surprised. Some were a little bit angry. They thought they were being dictated to, and we explained that wasn't what was happening. We were just choosing the menu, like, uh, you know, most places do. Explained what we were doing, said, look, football's two hours a fortnight on average. Why don't you come and try something different instead of what you always have? And uh, the fans came, they tried it, they loved it, and then it was all history. Here you go. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Nice that's big good. bowl for you. That looks great. So <laughs> vegan mac and cheese. Yeah. Let's give it a try. So somehow the um, the vegan cheese still gives that stringy texture. I don't know if you can tell. It tastes absolutely brilliant. And yeah. The texture is obviously part of it, but it tastes really good. So the biggest challenge for any athlete, I presume, is making sure they get enough protein and carbs mm -hmm. in their diet and yeah. quickly. How do you do that? Pre-match we'll do 
like um, more protein based stuff. So corn obviously is one of our biggest sponsors and they um, they have a lot of protein in their foods. Also like lentils, um, chickpeas, a lot, lots of different beans have loads of protein. Um, quinoa, so you could do like chilies, curries. Obviously I mentioned before about sunflower mints. And then post-match, um, we'll try and load them up on carbs. Does the club have a performance nutritionist overlooking the diet as well. As I mentioned, the fitness coach is actually um, the nutritionist as well. Like he's kind of um, does both, so he'll look after like um, all their nutrition side of things. So me and him work closely together to come up with meals that will suit the players. In an ideal world, like we'd have a chef that would travel with them, that would cater for their every need, you know, for injuries and um, everything like that. But uh, this is another problem we've faced is because obviously they have to eat vegan when they're at home, away, wherever they are, if they're training. Like regardless, obviously you can't tell them what to do in their home life, but when they're at work they have to. So um, another problem we faced is in the hotels, they're not really like that good at cooking vegan food. So me and Tom have come up with a, um, like a recipe book to give the hotels. So can you see how much is soaked, soaked up the sauce already? Mm. Mm. I personally love being a part of something that's bigger than myself. Um, and, the, and the football club have obviously got, they've got it right on the pitch at the minute, things are going well, but they've all also got like an ethos and, and, and an environment that's been created obviously from the chairman down and uh, it makes you feel a part of something. How do you find your recovery um, into, or response to training as well? Because obviously you're a centre half, so you need to be strong and in the tackle, you know, explosive with aerial battles and stuff as well as, you know, fit from an endurance perspective as well. So how does the re recovery and training and your diet? Um, the injury record, I think, of Forest Green the last two seasons has been unbelievable, um, really. So how much of that's down to nutrition? I don't know, but it's a recipe that's working really well for the football club right now. Um, we seem to, like I said, we seem to have a lot of players available for a lot of games this season and last year, um, especially. So long may that continue. So finally, can you be a vegan and still compete at the top level of professional football? Yeah, 100%, because there's nothing within a vegan diet that would suggest that you would, you would struggle or you would lack in any nutrition to not be able to succeed in sport. It's just one of the myths around veganism, isn't it, that um, you can't get enough protein, you can't get enough calcium, you know, whatever it is. I, I mean, there's no, um, there's no sense, there's no science in any of that, so I, I kind of shrug. Although, <clears throat> I suppose, you know, if people believe it, then we have to address it and say to them, oh, come on, look, this is not, um, this is not true. And I think um, having a football club that's successful helps us to do that because footballers are role models for a lot of people. Uh, it's a very physical game. You have to be incredibly fit to play 90 minutes of football at this level. And if you can do that on a vegan diet, then I think, you know, that's probably the most effective way to debunk the vegan myths. Vegan burgers, I will gladly take two if no one's watching. How good does that look? Now comes the easy part, join it. I can't talk, so yeah, that's good for me.